This is a presentation about the post message proc statement and the message API. There are two parts to this presentation. This part one describes the statements and the architecture involved on the message API and this is followed by part two which has a demonstration and features proc code statements actually used in the demonstration. The message API can be thought of as a message-based communication protocol. It's a mechanism that allows two component instances to communicate with each other. You could consider it as less formal than using an activate statement, since an activate statement refers to specific parameters and numbers of parameters and their data types. As we'll see, there's only one particular parameter involved in the message payload. There are also some restrictions compared to using Activate. The communication is only available in asynchronous mode and it is restricted to the Windows platforms. This is because it uses uh, only US ASCII code pages. Messaging software tends to divide messages into queues for easier management and control. In this case, in Uniface, Message queues could be considered uh, to be the Uniface server types. URouter manages these and thus can direct messages wherever required. The receiver of a message through this API is a target component instance. Its asynchronous interrupt trigger is fired and processing occurs with whatever's coded in there. There is an alternative. The asynchronous interrupt trigger of the application startup shell could also be fired in certain circumstances. To process the message in these async triggers, you can use a variety of prop functions such as $MSGID, $MSGData, and $MSGSource. SRC. You can use this to further interpret what to do with the information communicated to that component and that includes composing a reply message. What scenarios are there for sending messages? First of all, Uniface instances can send messages to other Uniface instances. The first example of this involves using the post message proc statement. This however is restricted to targeting instances that are actually executing within the same runtime environment that has the post message statement. It is possible for Uniface to send messages to other Uniface instances in other runtime environments, be they on the same machine or somewhere else on the network. However, this will involve an activate statement and I'll describe these techniques very soon. There are two variations on, on this external interface. One is using a C-based signature for the UPost MSG DLL and the other is to use an OS Kamar signature for a utility program called UMSGUtil.exe. Since there is this external mechanism for uh, communicating to Uniface targets, this actually indicates that it is possible for non-Uniface programs to also send messages to Uniface components using this message API. This means that you can embed message sending into any C-based program and there is a 3GL library available for this purpose. There is also a Uniface sample provided in the Uniface standard installation and that includes an OCX and VB example. The ActiveX control also allows a non-Windows integration via a web browser as that uh, installation of that sample will show. You'll be able to find the sample called integrate msgutility.zip in the samples folder of the Uniface subfolder of the Uniface installation. And these are screenshots showing a VB program client as well as a browser holding an ActiveX control. And at the bottom right here you'll be able to see a Uniface application startup shell that is with one with one form uh, receiving these messages and displaying them. The 
the message API is quite simple and has four parameters in there. The first parameter, the network path, consists of the host ID, which could be, in, as in all Uniface assignments, a DNS name or an IP address or something that can be resolved. If this is followed by an optional plus port number, then there's the vertical pipe and a valid operating system username in that host ID's environment. No password is necessary. Note that this first parameter, the network path, is not used by post message proc statement. It is unnecessary as the post message statement is restricted to sending only to target instances inside the same runtime environment and thus will not go to the network. The destination is comprised of a UST name and a colon and an instance name. The UST name can be created by various means that we'll see shortly. If the instance name is missing and only the UST name is present, then the asynchronous interrupt trigger of the startup shell will be explicitly uh, targeted. The message ID is a simple string of 32 bytes length and has no particular meaning for the API itself but it does offer a means of filtering messages within your proc code. And finally there is the message data parameter which is restricted to 512 bytes. This is basically your payload that you can deliver. It's a string data type that will conform to the ASCII, US ASCII uh, code page I mentioned earlier. But you're free to do what you would like with this. You could insert strings of data if you wish to encode some kind of parameter mechanism. Now to program this, let's have a look at a simple application called application A. It has two form instances executing, form A and an instance named form B. So we could imagine there's a command button painted on form A and its detail trigger would have a post message statement with three parameters on it. The instance target, the message ID and the actual message. Thus form B's asynchronous interrupt trigger would be fired and those proc functions I mentioned earlier would be capable of processing the message. Now let's imagine there is also an application B running and it's been started to listen on slash UST equals 5678. As we can see it has the same form B executing within it. The application startup shell itself also has coding in its asynchronous interrupt trigger. Now we can see two non-uniface applications making use of the message API to communicate. The first one called umsgutil.exe is a simple command line, that um, a program that can be run from a DOS prompt. And here we see there are four parameters. Host 1 is given as being this environment and port 13000 and 1 is the default U router listening port. And user A is simply used to verify that access to the machine is permitted. Then the next parameter is the UST name and the target instance. So UST 5678 colon form B. That finds application B listening on that UST and form B instance in memory. So the message is hello from command. The second example is an OCX control and that may be encased by various programs. It's targeting host 1 on port 13001 user A as before and this time the message uh, destination is UST 5678 and form C with an appropriate message payload. Now there is no form C instance listening inside application B so that message will be interpreted by the async interrupt of the application startup shell. Next we'll see communications from uniphase component to external uniphase component. As I mentioned earlier 
post message isn't available to us because it can't address a network location outside of the current runtime environment. Hence, we're using activate statements. In this case, I'm using a post DLL signature, which I'll describe shortly. It uh, activates a particular operation and its parameter are those same four parameters that the external programs also used. So network name or host 1 plus 13,001, user A, destination uh, 5678 colon, in this case no instance name is mentioned, so therefore that will go immediately to the asynchronous interrupt trigger of the startup shell. Here's another button detail which this time goes specifically to form B and that is picked up by form B's interrupt trigger. Let's have a look, let's have a look at the architecture involved here. We mentioned that there are several ways to use this message API. We can activate a signature and in this case postmessdll.sig for signature with a post operation or we could use a DOS shell or a command line uh, program MSG util and this is provided in the sample I mentioned earlier or we could use the OCX also provided in the sample earlier but the point is that they all end up by one means or another calling the UPost message DLL which has those parameters defined and it's that program that effectively makes the call to you router listening on that specified network path and that in turn knows which uniface runtime environment to execute according to the UST that it's registered with. The UPost MSG DLL can be defined more or less uh, by a signature like these screenshots describe. The actual signature name is not important, but you must choose the C implementation. There is one operation only required, and it is U post message. And these are the four parameter names involved. You then must know, uh, make sure that that signature after compilation is executed with an assignment setting of user 3GL U post msg.dll listed. Now we come to the topic of configuring USTs since we had just used a fixed one in the previous screenshots and, and samples. That describes a static way of defining USTs. The command line has the normal parameters that you would have, for instance uniface.exe slash ADM slash ASN and a startup shell name at the end, but there is a slash UST switch which hard codes a name that will be registered with uRouter. It's also possible to use dynamic USTs. The open proc statement can be used on path $DNP. You could use whatever mechanism you like to figure out what the host a network name is, what the username is, and what the UST name is. Once this open command executes successfully, it will actually register with you router at that time dynamically a UST. So the challenge is to think of an appropriate um, way to populate dollar USD dollar in this example. One logical way to do this would be to use the process ID of the actual runtime environment. Since Uniface 9.4 patch R109, there's a new proc function called dollar process info. And one of the options on this proc, uh, proc command or proc function is to actually identify the process ID. Another way to figure out where to send a message to is to make use of the uRouter monitor API. If you start up the uRouter monitor, you will see that all the clients and servers that are running on that particular uRouter that you specify can be identified. 
the U Router Monitor API allows you to do this inside your Uniface programs. Thus you can allow the user to select the destination for messages. So to conclude this part one, you can use the messaging API to support peer-to-peer -peer messaging or as a mechanism to integrate non-Uniface components into Uniface systems.